yelling and they're freaking out, well, you're, you're on the right path because that's when they start getting belligerent. And that's one of the clues that you know that they don't have, uh, know what to do next. <laughs> uh, oh, they, they know what to do, believe me. They'll, uh, a lot of times if, if, like I say, like we have one friend that Marty's been going to court with a couple times now, about five times in a row before they finally brought in their sniper judge that every argument Marty brought up and he wasn't really uh, as prepared as he should have been. And as soon as the sheriffs came, he did, he did the old, uh, I'm not going to jail for this, and sat down kind of thing, right? So, yeah, whereas um, I told everybody here the story about, uh, I sent a first-time guy, my, my older brother. He knows a little bit about this, but not much. I sent him into family court for the first time of his life in Alberta. First hearing, we filed an affidavit and a motion for, uh, motion to quash in the court. He went down, filed it in the court at 8.30 in the morning. The court was at 2.30 in the afternoon. Went up to the courtroom, had copies for the Crown. Gave, uh, they actually used crowns there, I think. It was the weirdest thing for family court. Uh, or no, maybe it was a private lawyer. I can't remember either way. So he served, gave it to the lawyer, gave, walked up to the clerk of the court, asked her, he goes, did you guys receive my affidavit earlier today? And she's like, huh, are, are, are you this guy? And he's like, yeah, it's me. Oh, oh yes, we got it. He's like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird. So he goes and he sits down, the judge came in and uh, he basically sat, he just stood up and, and said, I'm here regarding that matter, that was it. And she, Mr. Clifford, blah, 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 blah. He didn't address the name at all. That's why the name game is absolutely irrelevant. I can prove it, I know it because it happened with my brother. Didn't even address the name, just said, I'm here regarding that matter. Your name that you've put, labeled me with, I don't care, I'm here regarding that matter. Mr. Clifford, bah, 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 five minutes later, right? And uh, she just looks at him, she's like, how do you wish to proceed? He goes, did you, did you read my affidavit? Well, yes, I read your affidavit, Mr. Clifford. And she's been kind of nice to him, right? And uh, he's like, well, motion to quash. Mr. Clifford, three minutes later, and she knew he was, she was just trying to draw him into an argument that was irrelevant. He knows that because unfortunately, I hate to admit it, he's kind of smart like that sometimes and I've taught him well. So after about two and a half minutes of that, she's like, how do you want to proceed? Excuse me, did you read my affidavit? Yes, Mr. Clifford, I read your affidavit. Motion to quash. Mm -hmm. Mr. Clifford, there's children at stake here. Blah, 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 blah. Four minutes later, he had to interrupt her. He finally said, excuse me. Did you or did you not read my affidavit? Yes, Mr. Clifford, I read your affidavit. Motion to quash. Next thing you know, there's two sheriffs coming up on each side of him. Right? He just looks side to side. And Darren's a big guy. He's about 2, 210, 220, I, I think. He's my height, maybe about an inch taller. And he's just, he looks like Razor Ramon from WWF Wrestling. You know, like the toothpick kind of guy. Like, hey, you know, like I'll take you down kind of stuff. And he looks to the side of him, and there's these two sheriffs. They had this thing scripted. They had this thing scripted. They had a guy with an earpiece in the corner waiting for the appropriate time to call the sheriffs in. They were waiting for him. They had it all ready to go. They had the two sheriffs there for intimidation. They just slipped in uncalled. And he just let, and I, I thank God I told him to prepare for that. I said, be prepared for sheriffs. When they walk in, this is what you do. He said, excuse me. Are these two gentlemen public servants? And right away, her head just went down. And he said there was an awkward silence for about a minute. And even he was like, this is just getting awkward. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, yeah, so finally he just goes, well, he goes, it appears they are public servants. So on and for the record, they do not have my consent to touch me. They don't have my consent to intimidate me. I want them to back away from me right now and they just scurried off to the corner a little bit. And she just looks and he said she just basically looked up and she just went, how do you want to proceed? He goes, I think my business is done here. He turned around to walk out and she goes, Mr. Clifford, I can file a something, something, something in your absence. And he turned around and he just went <laughs> and kept walking out. And he said, just the look on these two sheriff's faces, when he walked by the one guy who was a half a foot taller than him, the guy was going, looking at the judge, like, Tell me to do something, yeah. right? He, what arguments did he make? Did you read my affidavit? Motion to quash. That was it. The rest was in the affidavit. He didn't have to say a thing in court. That was it. It was about preparation. That's something else we can get to another time, right? 
First time guy, never been in any of these situations before in his life. He never heard about it ever again. They've never contacted him. They never answered the motion. Isn't that kind of weird? Three times motion to quash. They didn't grant or deny the motion. Uh -huh. Just the threats. I can issue a, a, a warrant for your arrest in your absence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I care. I walked out. That was it. No more summons, no more, no more letters, no more nothing. That was the end of it. And that's all he had to do, right? So, I can't remember why we got in that topic, but that's okay. But that's just how easy this kind of stuff is. So, um, but what he did was he didn't allow the judge the position of authority. I think is what's going on. They couldn't jockey him in a position. Uh, it was even a preliminary hearing where they're trying to set up the players. And I don't think they even got around to that. That's kind of my thinking on that. They, they didn't even get around to setting up the players of what was going on. And he kind of just took control of the situation, just kind of said, well, do you read my affidavit, motion to quash? No, okay, well, see you later, bye. When he was leaving, would it have been better if he just turned and said, you don't have my consent for that and walked out? No, I think what he did was better. Oh, okay. Because it's more... Uh, question is authority. Yeah, it, it is more like... <laughs> they have to question who are, have who are you? I, I don't give a sh I don't give a shit what go ahead. I don't care what you do. Servant, master, it's like do whatever you want to claim. It's like a little kid. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, we've got about two minutes left. Did you have anything else to say about what you were just talking about, this case or whatever that you're Oh not about that one, but uh, just real quick, can we talk about the lawyer stuff? Well, yeah, so that's gone. Yeah, yeah. About two minutes left. Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, well, we'll just we'll briefly cover. We'll do it more in a couple of minutes, but we'll do arrest rolls and claim of right real quick. So we can do whatever. Yeah. So, because this is uh, the side of the road, a lot of people have a problem at the side of the road, and they think they got to do the old uh, excuse me, uh, uh, peace officer. Uh, did you observe me breach the peace? You know, yada yada yada. Actually, what I say. There you go. The whole nine yards. The problem is if you call them a peace officer, uh, they've got peace officers defined in every different act in different roles. So they can be a peace officer under the Highway Traffic Act. So are you a peace officer? Yes, I am. He's not going to tell you he's only a peace officer under the Highway Traffic Act in that instance. Right? Well, so you're sunk. I believe in lawful definitions. Well, you're yeah. You're operating under a different definition. Yeah, that's the whole thing. You gotta, if you guys are going to be doing business side of the road, you've got to identify the players right away, right? Yeah, yeah. So, totally so why is it the judge has, or sorry, not the judge, why is it the police officer has the authority to stop you, question you, and then write up an order and carry it out on the spot? Presumption. Presumption, yes. But why does he have that authority? How could he possibly have that authority? Because we granted it to him. He's delegated to him. We just, we just covered this. He's acting Sorry. as. Well, he's acting as administrator. administrator. He's he's acting as administrator and beneficiary of the trust on the spot. And you're the trustee, and you're not doing what he told you to do. That's your first court appearance. He's making the presumption that you're the trustee. Right on the side of the road. So you got a cop that pulls you over, and that's the arrest rules right here, because we, I, people wanted to talk about that when we got back. The arrest rules when you get pulled over. And people are, uh, I even did that one time. Excuse me, are you a peace officer? And the guy's like, Yeah, I'm a peace officer. I'm like, all right, well, what's, what's your claim against me? He's like, I don't need a claim against you. And I was like, well, I, blah, 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 and I got kind of mad about that, right? And then the guy, but he was right. He was absolutely right. He's the executor. He's acting as the executor, and I didn't remove that from him, right? Uh, that's, uh, what, uh, I got a friend that uh, calls that uh, stripping titles. And they understand this? Yes, they know this. Okay, they do. Absolutely, and this I... This is I, a whole new lesson, though. This is a whole new lesson, so we'll get into that another time. But that's basically what's happening the side of the road, at the side of the road. Is yeah, you've heard it's people, yeah, you, yeah, you've heard people say it before. So we can further explain that um, about you're holding court at the side of the road. People used to tell me that five years ago. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're not holding court at the side of the road, right? Well, in trust law, you are, because court is any administrative proceeding where the three parties are present, and they are. Yeah, because he's two of them and you're the trustee. That makes your next appointment the appellate court. Well, then they just railroad you through from there. They just, they just continue on with the presumption from there. They make it more formal. They add more players, right? And that's an excellent other more people to get Yeah, so we'll, we'll get into that another time, but what you would do in that situation, because uh, then, then it gets to be fun. <laughs> so we can get arrest rolls gone. Uh, claim a right. That's the comedy. Yeah. 
See, uh, actually, this is something that I would like to say. Do you mind if I... No, nope, how about it? Okay. I am Patrick. I'm uh, the current Chief Administrative Officer of uh, the Canadian Chapter of the Royal Freemasons Society. I know that it's a mouthful to say, but uh, the claim of right is uh, one of the big uh, spots that people uh, stumble at. Because the claim of right can be uh, applied to anything. It's not just a <coughs> demand for free hydro or demand for whatever. It's, uh, it's hey, this here is my life. You know, you got something coming into on my life. Yep. This is what I live. Anyways, uh, but the claim of right itself can be applied to any situation. It's a procedure. It's not just a solution. So you've got to open up negotiations, you've got to say, hey, this is what I believe, do you believe something else? And you, no, you don't. And these are the things that can be entered into legal proceedings if you want to take it to commercial, uh, which one? Or to contract. Yes. Yep. So that's all I wanted to say. Okay. This is claim of right is really confusing for some It is. So the premise of the claim of right, for people who don't know what that is, is that people have written up 100 page documents where they've gone through and they've decided I want to let the government know all the rights that I have. I want them to let them know that if I want to walk out in my yard and cut my grass to 1.5 inches I can do that and they think that they got to write these giant thick documents up. Oh man if I don't get that one in there I don't have the right to do that either right? Okay the problem with that is why don't we turn that around? If you want to do a claim of right the claim of right you should be sending to the government should be one line long. Okay, but wait, 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 wait. wait. Okay, well, hang on. The, the claim of right is also a legal defense. It, well, okay, it can legal be, but defense. I'll get into what would be a better legal defense yeah. than the claim of right. The claim, the claim of right you should be sending to the government is, is one line long. Uh, provide proof of claim for something that you're alleging I cannot do. Yeah, we came up with that. I got, I got looking at these documents. I'm like, oh my god! Like this guy's got his right to shave his beard after two days on this document. Like, they're not saying we don't have these rights. No one's ever said we don't have these rights. That's not what the problem in court is. It's not that we don't have rights. And if you want to establish your rights for what, if you think that you need that, that needs to be necessary then the only argument you need to make as government is I'm going to give you 21 days to send proof that I'm not allowed to do something. <laughs> guess what? If they don't send you a reply, then I guess other than not harming somebody, you can do what we already know. Anything you want. That alleviates the need for all that nonsense. So we just turn that right around on them. And then I decided after that, I'm like, well, instead of even sending that, let's just go a couple steps further with that. We can get into that in another thing altogether, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to drag yeah. you off. No, no, it's all good. But, but so, instead of the claim of right, you can narrow down what a, what a claim of right is. And I've talked with, this, with, with a number of people here. And that's basically that, the, I think the fee schedule was the most important part of the claim of right. Now, that's not a claim of right. That's a contract offer. Right? Now, the, the theory on this, and it's completely correct, is that your rights have a price attached to them, whatever you think that they are. So you can consider, and I like to use the car lot approach on this one because it helps people understand how to negotiate with the government. It's not even a negotiation. I, I don't even use that word anymore. It's not a negotiation, right? Your offers are non-negotiable. And this is why. Your rights have a price attached to it because only you can determine what they're, what they're worth. So you have a car lot, you're a car salesman. Here's your little car building lot, right? Building right here is your office. Office, okay. Yeah, yeah, it's whatever, okay. And here's your, your compound, right? And this compound encompasses what is your life and your rights and what, you, what you're able to do, what God left you as your, your, your estate, right? And everything's in here. Um, doesn't matter what it is. Every right is like a car. So you got all these little cars over here. I don't care if they're Pintos. I don't care if they're the most, I don't care if it's your right to shave. 